Hey students, we're going to go over the first part of periodic trends in this video, specifically the effective nuclear charge and the shielding effect. So, um, firstly, let's talk about Coulombic attraction. We have already talked about the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons before in the electrons unit. We're just going to put a name to it now. It's Coulombic attraction. And Columbic attraction is that attractive force between those positive protons and those negative electrons. And the Columbic attraction of an atom is based primarily on two different factors. It's gonna be based on the charge size. So the greater the charge size, the greater that amount of protons and the positive charge of the nucleus, the more attraction that there will be between the nucleus and the valence electrons or the core electrons. Um, Columbic attraction then is going to be inversely proportional to the distance. So we talked about different energy levels in the last unit. And with the positive nucleus and the negative electron, when they're close together, that attraction is great. Once you start to put more distance between them, the attractive force gets weaker and weaker. So clumpic attraction directly proportional, meaning when one goes up, the other goes up, or when one goes down, the other goes down. Um, clumpic attraction is directly proportional to the charge size because as the charge increases, the attraction increases, but it's inversely proportionate to the distance. And inversely proportional means one increases and one decreases. So this page is in your packet. Um, so let's go ahead and fill this out. We're supposed to draw Bohr models for uh, sodium and chlorine. So we have to put our number of protons in the nucleus. We have 11 protons for sodium. And it's going to have uh, 11 valence elect or 11 electrons, not valence, 11 electrons. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, Sorry, these aren't even sizes. We're gonna have eight electrons in the second energy level. And then we have one more to put in the third and oh, I skipped an energy level there. Let me undo those last two. Sorry about that. There we go. And we're gonna have one electron in the third energy level. Then we're gonna have 17 protons in our chlorine nucleus. And I'm just gonna draw these. We're gonna have two electrons in the first energy level. We're gonna have eight electrons in the second energy level. And then chlorine is going to have seven electrons in the third energy level. Now, as you can see, we're really focusing on first off on those valence electrons because the valence electrons are really what's gonna be determining um, our chemical reactivity and their ability to bond and all that kind of thing. So. When we're talking about the attraction, we really want to focus on the valence electron attraction. And as you can see here, the distance between the nucleus and the valence electrons is the same for both the sodium and the chlorine because they both have three energy levels. The sodium's valence electron is going to be located in that third energy level. Chlorine's valence electron is also located in the third energy level. So let's talk about which one of these two, the sodium or the chlorine, have the greater effective nuclear charge. Well, they're both valence electrons are the same distance from the nucleus. So we can't focus on the distance here. We have to focus on what's inside the nucleus. And sodium has 17, I'm sorry, sodium has 11 protons. Chlorine has 17 electrons over here. So the greater attraction is gonna be the chlorine because it has a greater positive charge. Greater positive charge means that there's going to be a stronger pull between the nucleus and the electrons. So this is called effective nuclear charge. And we're gonna talk about ZEF. So when I'm talking about ZEF, I mean effective nuclear charge. Z is for charge. Um, ZEF is the charge felt by a particular electron. And again, we're really focusing on those valence electrons because those are the most important in regards to reactivity. So the greater the ZEF, the greater the Columbic attraction, the greater the attraction there is between the protons and the electrons. So there's a way to calculate ZEF. Now, you're not gonna actually have to calculate what the ZEF is, what the greater effective nuclear charge is, um, 
on your test or anything, but I do like to show you this just so you know where this is coming from. So when we're talking about the ZEF of the sodium, for example, we had, this is our actual nuclear charge. So we had 11 protons and sodium had core electrons are your inner electrons. So everything but the valence. And sodium had 10 inner electrons in the first and the second energy levels. So sodium had an effective nuclear charge, a ZEF of plus one. Chlorine, if we want to calculate the ZEF of chlorine, chlorine now has 17 protons in the nucleus and it also has 10 inner electrons. So the number of inner electrons is the same here. So the ZEF for chlorine is going to be plus seven. So you can see that the ZEF of chlorine, the effective nuclear charge of chlorine is greater than the effective nuclear charge of the sodium. And you can see in the picture here that we have those inner electrons and the inner electrons shield the attraction between the protons, the positive charge and the valence electrons. So the more inner electrons there are, the more those outer electrons are shielded from the nucleus. Here, we're going to draw the Bohr models for carbon and germanium. So carbon has six protons in its nucleus. It's gonna have two electrons in the first energy level, and it's gonna have four electrons in the second energy level. Germanium is going to have 32 protons. It's gonna have two electrons in the first energy level. It's gonna have four, uh, eight electrons in the second energy level. And it's going to have 18 electrons in the third energy level. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And it will also have four electrons in the outermost energy level. So you can see here already, just based on the Bohr model, the electrons in the valence electrons in carbon are much closer to the nucleus than the valence electrons um, in germanium are. Because carbon has two energy levels and germanium has four energy levels. That means the valence electrons for carbon are in the second energy level, but they're in the fourth energy level for germanium. So let's talk about that ZEF. Let's calculate ZEF for both of these because I want you to see something. When we're talking about the ZEF for the carbon, we have six protons in the nucleus minus our two inner electrons. So that gives us plus four. Over here with germanium, we have 32 protons in the nucleus and we're gonna have two, eight, 18, so 28 inner electrons and a plus four charge uh, for the ZEF. So you can see that the ZEF for both the germanium and the carbon are the same. So we're looking at now the shielding or the amount of energy levels that are there between the valence electrons and the nucleus. So carbon, because the valence electrons are much closer we're gonna have a greater effective nuclear charge, a greater attraction between the nucleus and those um, valence electrons. So shielding effect, this is the other thing that is going to affect the attraction, the columbic attraction. This is basically saying how much stuff, how many electrons are there blocking the effective charge um, of the nucleus from those valence electrons. The more electrons that there are present in between the valence electrons and the um, nucleus, the more that those outer electrons are shielded from the effective nuclear charge of the nucleus. So the shielding is gonna be increasing as we go down a group because we're adding more energy levels. As we move across the period, the shielding basically stays the same because um, we're not changing energy levels. We're still in the same energy level going across the period. As we see an increase in our electron shielding, as we see more and more and more electron um, energy levels being added, 
we're going to see a decrease in that columbic attraction because the distance between the nucleus and the valence electrons is getting larger. So here's the effective or the general trend for nuclear charge. Um, when we're talking about trends, there's always going to be a trend going across the period and a trend going up and down the group. So with um, effective nuclear charge and the columbic attraction, we're going to see an increase going to the right of the periodic table because we're increasing the number of protons. All right. Um, when we go down a group, we're going to see the effective nuclear charge increasing because we're going to have or sorry, decreasing because we have more energy levels. When we have more energy levels, again, that attraction gets weaker going down the group. So let's see how these kinds of things look. So question number one, the effective nuclear charge experienced by valence electrons of an atom is primarily affected by so. First off, I think we can automatically eliminate some of these answer choices. Uh, we can eliminate the outer electrons. We know that has nothing to do whatsoever because we're talking about the attraction between the valence electrons, which are the outer electrons in the nucleus. We know it's not an electron distribution or orbital radial probability because we haven't even talked about those things. So now we're looking at inner electrons in the nuclear charge. So remember, we were talking about um, the distance between the, um, the nucleus and the valence electrons. And as that distance increases, the attraction gets weaker. So the more inner electrons there are, uh, the more effect you're going to see on that nuclear charge, that attraction. And number two, which electron in sulfur is most shielded from the nuclear charge? So most shielded means that it's the furthest away from the nucleus. So we're looking to see which one of these is the furthest away from the nucleus. Well, we can first off look at the quantum numbers in front of the sublevel, so we can automatically eliminate A and B because energy level three is further out. Then we've got 3P and 3S. Well, between those two, which of those sublevels is further away from the nucleus and therefore more shielded? Well, that means it's going to be letter C uh, because 3P comes after 3S in the electron configuration. It's really important to understand Columbic attraction, effective nuclear charge, ZEF, shielding effect in regards to the other trends because these provide the basis for the other trends that we're going to see as we look at and analyze the periodic table. So let me know if y'all have any questions about this.